Hi, I'm Alyssa Goodman, and welcome to the Alyssa Goodman Show. Every week, I am so excited because I get to interview these incredible people in the health and wellness space that are really making a difference in the world. And they are making a difference in different modalities, but Hope Gillerman is here today with me. She is an essential oil expert. She's been a health holistic practitioner for already over 35 years. So she really knows her stuff. And so we're gonna to talk to her about all the things that we need to know about essential oils and how to use them and what the best products are, her products, by the way, and um, how to use them for therapeutic reasons, because a lot of you out there I know don't really know what to do with them. Welcome, Hope. Hey, Lisa. Thank you for coming. I'm it, so excited. It's so great to be here and talking about essential oils, and I know that your followers are always looking for more information on anything that will save them time and help them get to the real benefits. So Absolutely. Yeah. Like they are hungry for this stuff. Yeah. As you know, yours are, and you're out there all over the world talking about it, yeah. you know, various ver publications and speaking engagements, which I think is so amazing because you're educating people. Yeah. That's pr primarily what I've been doing for the past <laughs> umpteen years is educating people on essential oils and self-care. Right. So tell me a little bit about how did this, how did the essential oils for you come about? Um, well, I was a young woman. Um, I'd been dancing my entire childhood and uh, I went to college and I was like, I don't think I can become an artist in college. I dropped out of college and I went to New York City to be a choreographer and it was the most exciting time in New York actually to be a choreographer because it was before all the, the governments had cut all the funding to the arts. So literally it was the hub of the whole world. Wow. It was so cool. It was just like every night you could go to a different loft, which in those days it would sell for like $15,000. And now it was like, you know, 5 million. Right. So it was these beautiful spaces and you could do dance every single night and the art world and the dance world, it was all one. And it was my whole dream. It was my whole being that was, you know, destined to be there then and to start my life as a choreographer. And I arrived in New York with um, chronic pain. And Chronic it was pain sciatica. Pain. Uh, and um, there was nothing wrong with me. And, you know, in terms of like there was no injury. It was right. all soft tissue. And at that time, the, the, the back care, the um, orthopedist, they didn't really know what to do about, about exactly. um, injuries like that. They were just like, go to bed. And rest. And, and I'm like, you don't tell a dancer to go to bed. I mean, I was already incredibly sad and, and dismayed that my whole identity was being threatened by this problem with my body that I didn't understand and I didn't know how to get rid of. And I'd walk out the door and think, okay, let's go do something. And four blocks later, I'd be like, I have to go home. I have to lie down. And Ugh. it was really, really demoralizing. And the thing when you're dancing is that if you don't dance every single day, you don't even feel like a dancer. You're like an imposter. Right. You know? Your whole identity is wound up with it. And so it was almost like I was losing my whole self, you know, at a time when, you know, it's hard to build up who you are, you know, right. and you're in your important youth. time in your life. Yeah, exactly. And so um, I wasn't getting much help anywhere I was looking. And you know, my father brought me to this back doctor who just totally gave me no advice. I burst into tears in his office and ran out. And I thought, okay, that's it. It's over. And I started to talk to my dancer friends and they all kind of looked at me like, well, you don't, you didn't hurt your knee. You didn't fall. What's wrong with you? Get back, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to what you're doing. And, um, and finally I found a couple of friends and one of them recommended the Alexander technique and the other one recommended, um, aromatherapy. So, um, the one that rec recommended aromatherapy sent me to an aromatherapist. She was a woman who had just been trained in France and England. She'd just come to New York. There was no origins. There was no, there, nobody knew anything about it except right. like lavender is in your cleaning products. Right. You know? And um, that's Charlie. Um, Her adorable dog. Here. Here's, he's going to come in and oh, join yeah. us. Oh, yeah. He needs to come. I uh, anyway. He, you know, he needed to be in here anyway. I know. Charlie is. Um, <laughs> and I believe that animals are healing. So mm -hmm. very. I like too. to have them with me. Um, and he loves essential oils. Anyway, so um, when I went to the aromatherapist, um, I had always been enamored of French perfumery. And so I loved smells and the artistry of blending um, odor and to make something beautiful and mm -hmm. sensual. Um, but when I smelled the essential oils, I was like, wow, 
I smelled them like when I got off the elevator. I mean, right. it was just like, what is this? What is this world? You know, and I got a two hour treatment from the therapist and I just felt myself floating away. You know, I just felt oh. all this, all the sadness and depression and pain just sort of floating away. And I just kind of gave in to the whole thing. And, um, and I got up after the session and I felt really light. My pain was gone. And I, I decided to walk like a longer walk to the yeah. subway and on my and then I walked to the subway and I took the subway down to visit my friends who had been planning to meet for dinner my dancer friends and um, you'll appreciate this <laughs> we were really unversed in in nutrition right we right. thought well you know keep your calorie count low but we also thought like eat lots of whole grains there was lots of bread there was lots of cheese there was lots of honey you know and um, we were very low on protein. I think they were completely deficient on protein. Right. And um, and we didn't have any idea, you know. And I remember walking into m into the dinner with my friends and saying, I've just had this completely transforming experience. And um, I feel that my whole body has been cleansed from the inside. Wow. The essential oil effect of detoxification is really palpable. And... And you also walked there. What happened? Yeah. The sciatic was under control. I didn't feel it. You didn't feel it. So I was, wow. Yeah. So I just thought, I've got to keep this going. Yeah. I, and so then I thought, you know, well, maybe what I need to do is to look at what I was doing wrong that was causing this pain. And so that's what I learned from the Alexander technique. So fast forward, I, um, I learned that I could change my body habits and get rid of the root cause of the back pain while at the same time the essential oils helped me to heal and that's a really big deal yes something that helps you heal because anti-inflammatories are great but they don't necessarily allow all the chemical processes in your body to happen that we need for healing no no because that sure you know we, about that right it's almost it's just like a band-aid yeah i think yeah and this is like this is going to the core yeah of yeah, because they have so many, so many therapeutic benefits. Right. And so I, it just became my mission from then on since I've had such amazing healing experience. Did it from continue? Oils. Like that feeling, the euphoric feeling? I would go once a morph. month and yeah. get the treatments and I continued with the Alexander technique and I got rid of my back pain. I mean, literally, <gasps> wow. you know, in yoga, how they always say, well, if you have back problems, do it this way or mm -hmm. modify it this way. And it was like, I have never modified a yoga pose for wow. people with back pain. My back pain, my back is not only pain-free, it is also really strong. From doing what you're, you've been doing? Yeah, from just keeping my body awareness mm -hmm. tuned in to what's really going on with my body. It's beautiful. And working with the Alexander Technique for posture, but especially working with essential oils to stay very in touch with what's going on in my body. They heighten your sensory awareness. So that was just such an incredible, beautiful thing to say, because that's what I try to talk to people about with my clients and just everybody they come in contact with. We all know our body, right? We right. know what's going on, but we don't stay in touch. Right. And so that is such a big issue. They're, everybody's so disconnected. We don't know what's, what feels right, what doesn't feel right. We yeah. walk around with this pain for years and years or yeah. all these ailments, right? So Absolutely. And you kind of not, your body... You know, your, your brain actually will reproduce the pain for you by itself, even if the cause is gone. Right. It's, it's, um, it's almost like the whole thing is a habit. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and one of the things that I learned from being a dancer is that you can feel everything, that you mm -hmm. know your body better than anybody. Mm -hmm. And if you don't trust that, you get into trouble. Right. Right. So you have to trust. Yeah. What is the biggest mistake people make with... <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think choosing that the, essential oils and I, using them. Yeah, I think that the biggest mistake that people make is to um, to think that they can sort of sprinkle them around the home or in the floor of their shower or kind of disperse them in the in the environment, and they don't spend as much time actually engaging with them directly through breathing rituals and topical application. So that's what I teach. Can you say, so topical application, that's a really interesting one. Yeah. So can you say a few things about like a, a oil, a certain oil that where you'd put it to topically, topically? Okay. So um, it's really pretty simple. When you're applying something topically, you put it where you need it. Okay. 
So, so if you have low or... back pain, you're going yeah. to put the essential oil. Okay. In. And and essential oils are are customarily used in a diluted state because they are the most concentrated form of herbal medicine. So you need to dilute them partly to cover a greater surface area of yeah. the body, but also because um, they just you don't They're need powerful. very much of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you use them a drop at a time, you can use them straight. Right. Um, but in general, um, you're going to be um, diluting them. Diluting them. You can use them to apply topically. And so if you have abdominal cramps, you would apply them on in your, you know, in your, around your abdomen. If you have them low back, you can apply them low back. If you have neck and shoulder tension, you're going to apply them in the neck and shoulders. Okay. If you have sleep problems, you're going to inhale them. If you have depression oh, and anxiety, okay. you're going to inhale them. Okay. Do you inhale them all day? Or just periods of the day where you have You can that. inhale them like five, six times a day. Okay. That's one of the beauties of it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people love perfume, but you can't be spraying perfume on yourself right. all day long every time you want to smell your perfume. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes I want to. Exactly. I think it's gone. So that's where you want to get right. essential oils back into your okay. life. Because those aromas, those scents that evoke beautiful memories and soothe your psyche. Yeah. You can be doing that all day long right. with essential oils. You can and then it that. just gets like infiltrated into your brain. And yeah, you actually, do... in fact, when you breathe in an essential oil, um, the vapor, uh, the essential oil evaporates as soon as you open up the bottle. Right. And so that vapor that um, yeah. you can't see uh -huh. is actually um, little little particles of essential oil that you're breathing into your sinuses and they're actually making contact with your brain because there's actually a part of oh, your brain that drops down okay. into your sinuses, which yeah. is the olfactory part of the brain. So right. there's nerve endings there. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you breathe in, what you're doing is ex actually those, you're absorbing those particles straight into your brain. Okay. And so wow. then they're in the memory part of the brain, but they're also in the part of the brain that affects the olfact, the um, autonomic nervous system, the way your body responds to stress. Mm. We now have studies that show that when you inhale an essential oil, yeah. it will lower the cortisol in your bloodstream mm -hmm. just through inhalation. Right. Okay. Right. So that's a marked in a piece of information that you want to remember when you're thinking, I need to help myself with, with the way I'm dealing with stress. That's why everybody needs these these days. Yeah. <laughs> We're all dealing with stress. And Definitely. And a lot heightened. of the medications that people are taking, yeah. we can use essential oils if, if it's not a, instead you know, of a some serious of them. clinical um, case. We yeah. can use essential oils instead. Yeah. We can use them for anxiety. We can use them for sleep. We can use them for depression. We can use them for alertness, for mental focus. Right. as well as boosting the immune system, relaxing muscles, healing pain. It goes Ugh. on. The, the list goes on. I'm in heaven right I mean, now. this is basically what medicine was, was before right. modern medicine. Exactly. Exactly. It was herbology. It's been around for centuries. Exactly. I mean, you look at um, the beginning of, of healing with essential oils, yeah. and it started in the Fertile Crescent mm -hmm. with cedarwood, which we now use yes. to um, repel bugs. But it's also a wonderful sleep oil, relaxes us, has a wonderful aroma if you mix it with other wood oils if you wanted to have it as a men's cologne hmm. there's lots of yeah. things that you can do with cedar wood what do people need to look for when they're looking for essential oils because there seems to be a lot on the market and i think that a lot of people that ask me they're i'm they're confused one of the most confusing things that happens when you go searching for essential oils is the the use of the term therapeutic mm -hmm. so that's like saying um milk is you know protein Le this is a real protein milk you know right. like all milk right. has protein okay <laughs> so same thing with essential oils they're they're all therapeutic right but the level to which that is effective the the, the level to the which the essential oil actually works depends on how it's grown how it's how it's um distilled okay and how it's stored so if you purchase um certified organic essential oils you actually know that that plant has been nurtured correctly without the use of pesticides. And also there's paperwork to prove that it, it wasn't adulterated with other ingredients that could even include petrochemicals. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you want so certified really organic crucial. essential oils, definitely. Okay. You also, um, you can buy essential oils in the health food store mm -hmm. and um, there's some very beautiful brands that are sold in the health food store. Mm -hmm. I love Veritas, okay. which is um, getting more known and in, in, in more widely available. Um, because I've worked with the, the woman who started the company. Okay. And I know all about it. Um, so um, that's so a high quality. That's company. a good one to look right. for. Um, and they do, they do exclusively organic. Um, and um, so if you're a big rose freak, yeah. I would definitely get Veriditas. Okay. V as in Victor, E-R-I-D-A-T-A-S, I think. Is rose has been a big 
thing on the market for the last yeah rose is really years. expensive yeah. but so what they make um what one of the ways to extract rose essential oil is with a, a chemical agent which means it's called an absolute mm -hmm. so it's not technically an essential oil but it has it has the oil in it, right? Um, and so, if you buy a ro an organic rose absolute, you can be get, you can be sure that that agent yes. is not going to be harmful to you. Wow. Okay. Those are important things to know. That's Most people wouldn't it. know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. That is so interesting. I mean, when you go to Morocco and you buy yeah. essential oils on the street, it's pure. I don't know if you're oh. getting essential oils. Okay. Okay. So okay, it's not the pure. It's not right. You need you certified know what organic. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to okay. know what's in the bottle. So that's one really important yeah. thing. So then you can be assured if you're buying sort of organic oils, mm -hmm. they are all going to be therapeutic. Because the thing is, these days we're so loaded with toxins and so many chemicals and fillers and pesticides and all that. I mean, so we really don't want to be using something that is so beneficial for us with that in it. Absolutely. I mean, that's Absolutely. And you know, where did you catch ever. on that, uh, Melissa? You know, in fact, essential oils are so readily um, absorbed into the body. Like quickly. Yeah, really quickly, that they actually create a pathway for other chemical components to that's be absorbed. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So you definitely... The skin is... Yeah. So for example, like it used to be French perfumery, perfumery was a combination of essential oils and synthetic fragrance. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that's going to catch up with your body. Right, right. So yours are therapeutic, um, and I love the different blends. And what is, what are the pros and cons? You know, what are the pluses and minuses of the therapeutic ones? Like I can't you, think of what the cons are. Uh, there's no cons, <laughs> but you know, what are you know, what are the pluses of using therape it therapeutically? So. Um, so basically, as I said, the essential oils are therapeutic, and what I do is I combine them into treatment formulations, okay. which I call remedies. Right. So that means that they're designed to target specific issues, and um, you know, herbal medicine is, it's really nothing like modern medicine, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it's such a different way of thinking, and one of the main things about herbal medicine is that um, you're dealing with vibrational healing, and you're dealing with what you bring to the table, um, which is called the, your intention. Mm -hmm. So if you work with essential oils with the intention to fall asleep, mm -hmm. you're gonna choose certain oils and you're gonna use them in a specific way and you're gonna have that intention of falling asleep. And that's all those three things together I mean you don't need to take sleeping pills. Okay. Um, it's not difficult. It's right. just a totally separate way of approaching things. and. And I think that, you know, we know what to do with shampoo and we're not as clear what to do with, um, with essential oil. Right, so for example, right. what you would do if you wanted to sleep, you would take a tissue um, and you would, this is my sleep remedy, mm -hmm. which is a very simple blend of lavender, clary sage and blood orange. Mm. Um, dogs don't really like lavender that much. Um, and you put two to three drops on the tissue. Here, you can smell it too. Let me see. And um, the tissue, uh. um, yeah, <laughs> see, there we go. Woof. I'm already relaxed. Yeah, it's instant. Ah. It's totally instant what mm -hmm. essential oils do. Very good to use on film sets. Oh. Um, and <laughs> so you hold the tissue up to your nose. Yeah. And you slowly inhale. And you inhale without lifting your shoulders, without creating any strain, which brings in that mindfulness component. Mm hmm And you can move the tissue back and forth if you want to, because smell is 3D, just like vision. Mm. It smells so good to it me right heavenly. now. <laughs> it's so wow. You know, part of why it smells so good right I just now needed is because it's very. Relax. This is a very cooling blend. Yeah, and it's really hot in LA right, right. now. Right. So this is kind of like iced tea. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so if you do five to ten inhalations of your sleep remedy, you're going right. to be doing it in the dark, in bed, in bed. Mm -hmm. Everything is done. You there's nothing left to do except fall asleep. Right. Don't forget, your mom and your your parents taught you how to fall asleep. They did. So you know how to do yeah. it. You just might have forgotten. Right. Okay. So you breathe in the essential oils five to ten times, and you, then you can put the tissue aside. You can put it underneath your pillow, right. or by your bedside table, or whatever. You don't actually have to apply it to your body. Okay. Because those ten breaths is enough absorption okay. of, of the chemical components within the essential oil, one of which is called linalool, which is what makes you fall asleep. Oh, wow. It doesn't drug you no, like, but it like just, 
it will help you get drowsy. It is sedating. Okay. And basically, you just put the tissue aside. You close your close your eyes. Get comfortable. Mm, and that's very it. nice. That's yeah. pretty easy. That almost. And if you wake up, you do it again. Okay. And you do it when, again. in the night. If you wake up at two a.m. or whatever time, you do it again, and it will help you go back to sleep. Yes. Because I get a lot of that. A lot of people are like, "I'm up at two. I can't go back. My mind's racing." And this is an easy thing to do. It's really super easy, easy wow. thing to do. And then um, in the morning, you can rub it under your armpits. It makes a great deodorant. <laughs> So three for the price of one. Like two. That's the whole like, point I of love, essential oils. Yeah. Is really to illustrate right. is that um, they're extremely multifunctional. Yeah, it's just like food. I okay, know. I mean right. we're in the same world. Right. You know, you deal yeah. with aromatics. Nourishing, nurturing. You deal with nourishment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all and about you deal that. with how At a when you combine level. things together, they have a more synergistic. They have a synergistic interaction, which makes them more therapeutic, and enables them to be adaptogenic, giving your body what your body needs instead of saying, okay, we're going to make everybody who takes this pill right. conk out, right. you know? Well, maybe some people are too too depleted to conk out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need mm -hmm. to be strengthened first. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And most people don't think about that. Yeah. They don't know. But we that. do. Yeah. We think, oh, well, if you have sleep problems, we've got to we got to strengthen, strengthen you. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Adrenals get you back stronger. Exactly. And, right. we got to deal with where you're deficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Is there a certain brand of yours that does sell more than others? A certain product? Uh, not a brand, yeah, one of the remedies, not the um, brand. Well, I have your... to say that um, I like to use as a hashtag, peppermint is the new lavender. Okay. Um, because um, I think that, I'm going to try and say this in a non-emotional way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the issue with um, being attached to our electronic devices and oh. being called upon to multitask. Yes. Um, you know, even coming here, I'm using I'm using ways yeah. ways to tell me what to do. I've got to see my phone. I've got to see what's happening in front of me. I got to see the traffic, and then ways is dropping down notices yes. for me about other While stuff that's going on, and I have to swipe it with my <laughs> finger so I can see the the map. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a perfect example of where stress comes from. Okay, that kind of multitasking. There's kind of no way to deal with it except to kind of hold your breath, right, right, and just hope that nothing goes wrong. Um, so. We have so much of that in our lives that um, our brains are overtaxed. We're also, all of us, oxygen deficient because we're breathing so shallowly from the stress. Right. And so we're having difficulty concentrating. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. That's why we can't read books. Why right. people aren't reading anymore? Right. They can't sustain. The, the anyway. attention span is exactly. so Exactly. So this is why people really want this oil. Okay. Um, I, you don't even have to put it on a tissue. Peppermint is very, very powerful. So it's just straight peppermint. peppermint and you no, know, it's my blend of peppermint and lavender. Okay. Um, and uh, and this is really helps you de-stress. Peppermint and focus. Yes. Yeah. And you can apply it topically. You, okay. One thing you would never do is put it on your fingertip, because you wouldn't want to touch your eye. Touch your eye. Okay. So you can actually tap it straight from the bottle to the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. And um, there's mm. acupoints there, so it affects those right. acupoints. And then um, it will relax your muscles, increase your circulation mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to your brain, because that's part of why your brain is fatigued. You're not right. getting enough blood. You're not right. getting enough oxygen. So it does all that beneficial boosting stuff, increases your um, mental focus, especially good for fatigue. But at the same time, it's going to relieve your stress. So just this little bottle, yeah, <laughs> you can carry around in your purse, yeah. easily in the car. Yeah. I mean, can do all of that like yeah. that. That's a, like a no-brainer, Hope. Yeah. Like this is And really don't put something. it in your car, whatever you do. Put oh, it on your it body. You don't want it to get hot in the car. Don't, never leave essential oils in the, in the car. car. And okay. never apply essential oil to... Because I do oil leave to... some in the car. So that's a no-no. Yeah, they're, okay. you just cook in the, the therapeutic okay. out of them. But the other thing is don't put essential oils into your car furnishings. Oh, okay. Always put them on your, on your body. body. Okay. Because car has um, a synthetic fragrance in it, which is new car smell. Okay. What's the future hold for you? Because I know um, there's a lot on your plate. Yeah, definitely. Very exciting. Um, well, um, one really big shift that happened, I think I was explaining to you before we got started, how difficult yeah. it was for me to get a manufacturer. And so I am now working with a company that uh, creates um, therapeutic products out of flower essences. And so we're oh, now wow. working on, um, and they're producing my product for me. So okay. this is freeing me for, to 
really to start to expand my line and to do much more education. I'm traveling around. I'm doing more speaking engagements. Yeah. I'm doing some work with nonprofits like okay. Film for Future and Bent on Learning. Do you know about Bent on Learning? No, no. Bent on to, Learning right? is in New York City. Um, okay. But um, if they bring yoga into the New York City school system. <gasps> wow. And I mean, there's nothing yeah. more exciting than that. They right. have like 300 schools waiting to get teachers. Uh huh. So anyway, oh. I'm trying to help them raise big bucks. Okay same thing things like that right. so um and always everywhere i go to help people learn about the healing benefits of essential oil and how to access them right through, through everyday self-care rituals oh, well yes. i mantra. am so impressed with what you've done Thank you. and your knowledge and just you know really being able to cut to the chase for people like wh how it's really important and why they should use it i mean i'm feeling like now everybody needs to know and everybody needs to yeah, use it and try it at least because we're all so reliant on the western modalities and this is absolutely this and you know for families it's like one person brings the oils into the household yeah pretty much the whole family will catch on exactly that's what happens in my family yeah I'm so honored to have you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. So and good luck me. with everything. Thank and thank you for being here. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> thank you. I love this show. Thank you.